Hey guys. Welcome back everyone to the Preferred Barrel Blanks YouTube channel. I am joined by Dylan today. And today we're going to be basically summarizing the differences between our three pre-fit barrel 6mm shootout that we went and did. So Dylan, which rifle did you shoot in the shootout? I had the Ruger American. Ruger American. And what was yours chambered in? 6x47 Lapua. 6mm by 47 Lapua. Awesome. How did you feel overall about the rifle setup and kind of how it shot for you? What did you think of it? I thought it was pretty solid. I didn't actually have this chassis on it. I had the Magpul Hunter at the time in the video that you guys saw. And I felt like the pistol grip was more of like a stock hunting stock versus a chassis where they have close to 90 degrees. Yeah, exactly. And I was kind of limited by the cheek riser because I didn't have the cheek riser kit. It yeah. didn't have, it's not adjustable like these, so you have to buy inserts. And, but overall, I think it did pretty well for the budget which is the main thing of that rifle, the way that it was. Yeah, exactly. So we used the Ruger American Action. You can get the entire Ruger, Amer Ruger American rifle for $400 or less. And uh, we put it in a $200 Magpul Hunter stock. It was on sale at the time. And uh, we had a really sweet setup going on. And at 700 yards, you were able to put together a really nice group. Do you yeah. remember about what size that was? No, it was like three, quick three, four MOA. Yeah, something like that. So really good shooting at a very well, very affordable action. So personally, I shot the six millimeter Dasher Norma, and this one was based on a Tika T3X action. And then we dropped this into a KRG Bravo stock. Um, so this is, a, this is a really great uh, value for what you get with this KRG. It's not the cheapest, but it is very affordable. I think we paid around 360 for it. 365. From, from Brownells. Yep. And uh, it really comfortable, uh, has, kind of a hybrid chassis stock we had going on with it. But up front, there's plenty of accessory attachment rails. Uh, you got M-lock slots up front, and you got holes along the bottom to put an Arca rail on if you have one, as well as a Picatinny rail up front, which is what I did. And uh, had the AICS mag bottom metal in there. Um, really sweet setup overall. Unfortunately, with the uh, Dasher Norma, without a spacer kit, you cannot mag feed with it. So I've got one on the way and we're getting that from MK Machining and we're gonna give that a run and see how it does on this guy. Um, the shooter we don't have with us is Rylan. Rylan is busy out in our shop because the guys here at our shop do shoot. Um, but Rylan had this Howa 1500 short action and his was chambered in six millimeter Creedmoor. You wanna go into details a little bit on his rifle? Sure, so this chassis was actually the most expensive. It's the XLR, what model is it? This is the XLR Element chassis. Element, okay. I think it's the most versatile, and I feel like it was the most solid. It's definitely the heaviest of all three of them. Yeah, out of all three rifles, this is the heaviest overall. Yep, and it was, I mean, which I felt like that was justifiable because the Ruger American stock is kind of limited to the chassis available, but this one, the Hala, this was available, and it had the most recoil out of the three of them, so I felt like that was a good combination. And with the six Creed, Rylan did really well. Yeah, Rylan did really awesome with this. Uh, in fact, out of these three rifles, he had the highest hit percentage rate when we were out shooting, and the entire time we were there, there was very strong winds, and yeah. we went straight to 700, 900, and 1375. Yeah, so, he was the only one who had a 700 round first round impact of the day, because first impact, first song was an impact. Yeah, I actually missed my first five round string. Uh, just the wind was bullying me left and right side of the plate. Dylan was able to get on the plate and Rylan got a first shot hit with his, so really good stuff there. Yep. Um, now, our pre-fit barrels available for each one of these actions, we do utilize a barrel nut. Um, in some stocks, the barrel nut may cause interference issues, you may have to have that opened up. However, in the chassis lines that we've used, we've found no problems at all with our barrel nuts. Yeah. In fact, the Ruger American, the nut is the same exact size as the factory nut. Okay. So it'll fit in all stocks, but the only concern is your barrel fitting in your stock. And the difference between ours and the factory rear nut is that we have flats, so you can actually remove it without damaging it. Yeah, exactly. The Ruger American ships with a smooth barrel nut, so you will need to use a pipe wrench or something to remove it, but you can reinstall ours or remove it later with our barrel nut and wrench. Yeah. Um, speaking of barrels, which barrels did we put on all three of these? 
So these are our three groove, one inch with six millimeters. Okay. And they're all 24 inches and they're all the straight, the paperless 900 contour. And we did that because we want to display also our floating designs because we can't do actually all three of these on like a medium or heavy polymer or a varmint that has any kind of taper to it, which is why we developed the taperless contours period. Yeah, so basically our machining capabilities, you have to have a straight surface to put really cool flutes like these on them. So we run a straight taper on these and that's why on our prefit barrel builder, you may not see every uh, fluting option available on every type of contour, yep. but some of them, you will have all the options. Yep, paperless or in a straight contour, you can have the cool flutes. Now, on the ends of our barrels, they are all threaded 5 8 24. We were running two Silencer Co. Hybrid 46 cans and then one Silencer Co. Omega can. And the reason uh, for that is because the ATF. Uh, Rylan has this and Dylan owns these too. So obviously we just had to run one different can, unfortunately. But we all we shot them all suppressed and they all shot and sounded just fine. Yep. Okay, let's talk about the loads that we used, which projectiles and brass, anything like that. So we wanted to keep everything pretty similar across the whole line as far as a almost comparison test. I mean, we have different cartridges, but we wanted to see how they perform with the same powder and the same projectile. And what projectile did we use? We used the six millimeter Burger 105 grain hybrid target bullets across all three. Yep, and I actually made sure we had 20,000th jump on each chamber. And we can post the cartridge overall links if we need to. Yeah, well. <laughs> we'll throw that up on the screen right here for the Dasha, or for the Dasher, Norma, Norma, and the Creedmoor <laughs> and the Lapua. Okay, so the interesting thing was, I mean, these cartridges aren't new per se, but the they're almost like a boutique. So the six x forty seven Lapua is still considered wildcat. The by six x forty seven Lapua brass which does use a lot of small primer, and make it down to six millimeter. You have an awesome round, it's been proven, it's been shot a lot by different competitors. The Dasher Norma is just like the step two of the Dasher, which is based off of the 6BR case. But Norma is like, hey, the neck's pretty short, let's add 40 more thousandths. So it's actually a little bit more versatile, you can chase your throat a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And then the six Creedmoor, you have a bunch of different brass available. You can use once fired large rifle primer, six fired Creedmoor. You can buy six Creedmoor factory ammo, which shoots great. And you can also buy six fired Creedmoor or six Creedmoor small rifle primer yeah. from different sources. You can get Lapua brass for this, or you can get bulk uh, Hornady large rifle primer brass, which is actually what we used was neck down six five once fired brass. We necked it down to six millimeter Creedmoor and we ran it. That's what we yep. did on this. So yep. kind of, to kind of summarize, the 6x47 Lapua is a specialty cartridge. You will have to neck down the one brand available brass for it is the 6.5x47 Lapua, so you're going to have to neck it down. The Dasher Norma is only available from Norma, but it's good to go out of the box. And then the Creedmoor, you can get factory ammo, you can get really nice brass, or you can get affordable bulk brass. So yep. really cool, different options for each one. Yep. So with the 6 dash from Norma, we ended up using 35 grains of H4350, which is not optimal for this case and bullet combo, we understand that. But again, we wanted to keep the powders and the projectiles the same. So if we would use Varget or another powder, we could have gotten a little more velocity, we feel like. But we were compressing that low, 35 grains, so it was yeah, and definitely we, compressing. We did use H4350 across the board in all three of these. Yeah so that we could get a, a comparison head to head on how efficient they were. So what's interesting about using H4350 in each cartridge is we're actually able to calculate each cartridge's efficiency with that powder. So what you do is you take your velocity and divide it by how many grains of powder you put into it. So for each grain of powder, it will give you so many feet per second. And so we can actually look at that head to head and what each cartridge is capable of. Now what's interesting is that the smallest cartridge is the most efficient, but overall it's getting the lowest velocity. Yep. Um, the Lapua is right in the middle of the road. You give it, it has a medium efficiency, and then you're in the middle of, the, of these three rifles for velocity. So the Dasher actually gets 80 feet per second per grain of powder. The 6x47 is 76.3 feet a second per grain of powder. 
and the sixth Creedmoor gets 72.5 feet per second per grain of powder. So relating to efficiency is you have your barrel life. So between the Dasher and the sixth Creedmoor, there's a seven and a half grain difference in the volume of powder. So we feel like the Creedmoor is not gonna have as long of a barrel life, even though we didn't shoot that long in this test to actually have any data. And we didn't shoot the same exact number of projectiles. So we can't give you any measurable conclusive data. We don't have an exact amount of bullets it takes to kill one of our barrels, but going by how much powder you're forcing through the same size hole, the more powder you do that with, it's going to wear out a barrel a little yep. bit quicker. Yep. Now, one great thing about these different cartridges are the overall lengths, and basically you're able to chase your lands a little bit more, increasing the barrel life. Um, I'd say ultimately the Lapua is probably the better way to go because you've got a long case neck there, but it's got a shorter case length than a six Creedmoor does. So you're able to fit it in a magazine stretched out farther. Correct. Yep. The, the six Creed, you run out of magazine first, unless you're running like a 2.95 mag. But the Dasher, you're going to pull the bullet out before you run out of mag length. Yeah, exactly. But that's why we really want to emphasize the Dasher Norma, because you do have an additional 40 thousandths. I mean, that's considerable longer neck versus taking in fire forming BR brass. So we're going to talk about the bread and butter of this test, which was how they shot next to each other. Exactly. Uh, we've got smaller details like barrel life, which is arguable, and you know efficiency and things like that, but actual hitting the targets, which is the whole point of its guns. Let's talk about that. Okay, so we have the drops and our windage holds for each rifle. Now we weren't shooting at the exact same time, so the windage may vary just a little bit, but it was a fairly consistent, strong wind when we went out there. When we showed up, it was windy. When we left, it was windy. Yeah. So there are some gusts in there and whatnot, but overall pretty good comparison heads up. Yeah. So starting off at our 700 yard range, uh, we had a target for each rifle. So we were actually able to get groups on each rifle as well. Yeah. And the overall drop for the Dasher, which is the slowest, was 15 and three quarter up. And for windage, I was holding between three and four MOA for wind. What, what were you holding on your Lapua? Uh, what'd you dial up and then what was your windage on your Lapua? All right, for me at 700 yards, I had 14 and a half MOA dialed up and I only held one MOA wind for the first shot. It ended up being three total. And that's how I had the four consecutive rounds. My first shot was two MOA off, corrected, and then I had four consecutive impacts, which were also close to the left side. So it might be four and a quarter or three and a quarter MOA. Okay. And then the Creedmoor, um, he actually fired last out of all of us. So was, he was able to hear our wind calls, knowing that his rifle is a little more efficient through the wind. Um, he ended up dialing up 12 and a quarter MOA for a drop. And then for wind, he was holding right around two to two and a half for his target. And uh, he was doing really well out there. Now, moving to 900, we're shooting at the same target with all these rifles. Uh, the 900 drop for the Dasher is 24 up, and my windage was 4 MOA. Now, the 900 was more of an angle to where it wasn't quite a broadside wind. It was a little more uh, shooting with the wind a little bit. So, a little bit less wind drift at 900 versus 700. So, what was your Lapua shooting at at 900? So mine is 19 and three quarter MOA for the up, and then we have five for the wind. And then again, that, that could just be the difference in the different times we were shooting. Yeah, the exact time that we were shooting. But I mean, it was very consistent. I held that thing no problem. I had a lot of my shots, so. Yeah, and then what was nice. the Creedmoor doing at 900? It was a little bit flatter. It was 17 and three quarter, and he was only holding three and a half for wind. So again, flattest, least wind influence. Yeah, so really for the long range stuff and the wind, the Creedmoor is definitely coming out on top, but you do have to consider the barrel life and things like that. You are gonna wear out your barrel a little bit quicker with that, as well as having a bit more recoil too. Yep. Now, going to our ultimate test for these six millimeters, uh, these are pretty small projectiles to be sending this far out, especially when you're starting off at 2,800 feet a second. Um, 
we went out to 1,375 yards on a, it was a large metal target, but even hitting a target out there with the six millimeters, a good time, it's a good yeah. challenge, yeah. especially in some strong wind. So my dasher at 1375 was 48 up, and I was holding eight to nine minutes wind. And uh, I was able to get decent repeatability. It did take me a few shots to kind of get myself on target, but I think I hit four or five in a row once I was on target, which is <clears throat> pretty good. Yeah. Okay, my turret is actually still dialed for this range because we haven't shot it since. And I am holding eight and a quarter for wind, and then it looks like 42 and a quarter for the elevation. Okay, very cool. So the 100 foot a second speed difference out to 1375, that's a six MOA difference. So he's holding six MOA less drop than my dasher is. And for the Creedmoor, his holds were 37 and a quarter up and he was holding seven minutes for wind. So overall, he's 11 minutes less than me with the dasher, 11 minutes less with the Creedmoor, which yeah. is quite a significant difference. Yeah. And then again, two MOA less on the wind. And his velocity was 3150 with the Creedmoor. Yeah. So really, if you're going for all-out performance and you're not concerned about barrel life, a six Creedmoor is a great way to go. You're going to hit your target a lot. Um, although if you want to cut back on recoil a little bit, uh, maybe a youth shooter or a female shooter, or you know what, I, I don't even like recoil. I like the dasher. It was good fun. I still hit my target. But overall, all three of these cartridges, plentiful brass, Many options for dies even. You've got bushing dies, standard dies, micrometer cedars, regular cedars, and you can do the old school, I uh, use my 6.5 Creedmoor seating die to see my six mil bullets in. Yeah, we didn't have a specific six Creedmoor die for seating, so I used a 6.5 to push them on in there. <laughs> yeah. Or you could use the 6.5.7, I did that too on Creedmoor. Yeah, that'll work. So, well, all right, guys, we greatly appreciate you watching this. We hope you enjoyed all the little details. Uh, that's something that we really get into here. We enjoy seeing and hearing that, so we definitely want to put that out as well. Yeah. So please subscribe while you're here. Drop a comment. Let us know which of these three cartridges you pick or which one we missed. What should we have done? Um, thank you guys again for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.